My name is Brian Page. I'm a research biologist with Ducks Unlimited Canada. Often people ask us, why is blue-green algae a problem and what makes it a bad thing? Well, first of all, some blue-green algal species produce toxins. And when these cells die, they rupture and they can release these toxins into the water. Toxins that are produced include neurotoxins, which can affect the central nervous system, and hepatotoxins, which can affect liver function. While there's few cases where humans have become sick, it's all too often where pets and livestock who are at risk of ingesting these toxins. The second reason blue-green algae are a problem is the overall effect on an aquatic environment. When large blooms of blue-green algae occur, they will eventually die and the cells will settle to the bottom of the lake. It's at this point where the bacteria begin decomposing the, the, the cells and they use up oxygen in this process, leaving maybe very little dissolved oxygen or no dissolved oxygen at all. And it's this which can result in fish kills, which we often hear about in the news. A third reason blue-green algae are a problem is the resulting aesthetics to a lake uh, where they form. Large amounts of blue-green algae can overtake areas of clear water very quickly, often spoiling beaches and boating areas that people often use for recreation. This further can impact local economies that rely on tourist travel during the summer months. Often we're asked, why is blue-green algae blooms getting worse? Well, blue-green algae blooms are getting worse for a few reasons. One reason is that climate change is causing our lakes to become warmer and blue-green algae can grow or multiply at higher rates in warmer water. Another reason is that with warmer air due to climate change, our atmosphere can hold more water, providing more intense rain events. And it's these intense rain events that are exceptionally efficient at delivering runoff that's high in nutrient concentrations to our lakes and our streams. A third reason blue-green algae are getting worse is the introduction of invasive species in our lakes. Two examples of this in Canada are carp and zebra mussels. Carp are exceptionally aggressive bottom feeders, so when they feed, they rip up the bottom sediments of our lake, and in doing so, they can resuspend nutrients that might not be bioavailable anymore. On the other hand, zebra mussels are filter feeders, and it turns out that they will feed on good algae, but they don't eat blue-green algae. This provides an advantage in competition for blue-green algae thus increasing the risk of blue-green algae in our lakes. As well, both urban expansion and agricultural intensification convert natural areas like wetlands that typically retain nutrients to areas on the landscape that can efficiently deliver nutrients to our water bodies, further promoting the conditions that are favorable for blue-green algal growth. There are several things that we can do to reduce the risk of blue-green algae. The main driver that drives blue-green algae is excessive nutrients, specifically phosphorus and nitrogen, being discharged into wetlands, rivers, and lakes. These nutrients come from two sources, point sources and non-point sources. Point sources are new sources of nutrients that are discharged into our water bodies um, from an identifiable point, often a pipe from an, either an industrial source or a sewage treatment plant. Decreasing our use of phosphorus in any cleaning supplies and encouraging state-of-the-art sewage treatment are a couple things that can reduce the nutrients that get delivered to our lakes via point sources. Non-point sources of nutrients are the diffuse sources of runoff from our general landscape that enters our waterways naturally. This can be in the form of snowmelt or rain events that while running off the landscape, picks up and dissolves either phosphorus or nitrogen and delivers them uh, to our lakes from either our lawns, an agricultural field, maybe a golf course, or even a soccer pitch. The good news is that we're learning how natural infrastructure can help with non-point source pollution. Examples of natural infrastructure are forest, grasslands, and wetlands that simply by existing on the landscape provide benefits to society. Wetlands have long been known to retain phosphorus and other nutrients on the landscape. So when phosphorus and nitrogen come into the land, into the wetland, less of those nutrients will leave that wetland. So by having more wetlands on our landscape, there will be less nutrients entering our lakes and our streams.